Hey what's going on gang, welcome to your 44th and final Vue.js tutorial and in this video we're going to continue hooking up our application to Firebase. So then in the last tutorial we took this add blog component and we hooked it up to our Firebase database. Therefore when we start to add content here and then click add it's going to send it to our own database rather than that fake REST API endpoint. So that's all cool, we're storing our own blogs now. However, when we go to blog, we're still listing all of that dummy content from the fake REST API. We don't wanna do that. And likewise, when we click into one of them, we're getting that dummy content as well. Again, we don't wanna do that. We wanna link these two components up now to our Firebase database so we can retrieve our own posts and show them, okay? So then, in the last tutorial, we changed the endpoint to this thing right here. We're going to post to this collection. That's when we add a new blog. We're also going to retrieve from this collection right here. So let's just copy this URL. We're going to use exactly the same one in our show blogs component. So show blogs component is the one that lists all of our blogs. So if we go down here to the bottom, currently we're using this JSON placeholder thing right here. We don't want to do that. We want to grab our posts from our Firebase in the posts collection. So we're going to use that URL. Also, this is still returning a promise. So we can tack on a dot then. Then we get a callback function with the data we've retrieved. We no longer want to do this thing where we start slicing stuff up. Instead, we just want to log this to the console to see what it is giving us. So let us now come over and open the console to see exactly what is being returned to us. I'm just going to give this a quick refresh as well. So we're going to clear console. Now we can see we're getting this response from Firebase. And there's a load of different stuff in here, headers, body text, status. Mm, we're not interested in all of that. All we need is this stuff in the body. And you can see these four objects are in the body. Okay. And in each object, we have four different properties, author, categories, content, and title. They're what we're gonna to output to the screen. However, there's one little problem here. In the last tutorial, or rather a few tutorials back, when we added links to each individual blog right here, remember we added this router link, we tacked on this ID right here so that when we go to the single blog component, we can grab this route parameter, this ID, and we can use it to query the database to get the exact post we want using that ID. Now, this ID property existed on that fake JSON we grabbed, but it does not exist in our data from Firebase. We don't have an ID property right here. However, what we do have is this unique key. So each one of these objects, which refers to a blog post, has this unique key kind of associated with it. So I guess what we could do is somehow use this. So I'd like to pop an ID property in here when we retrieve the data, and that ID is going to be this thing right here. So when we add it onto the link right there, we're just adding on this string, this unique string, this key, onto the link so that when we go to the single component, we can grab that string, that unique ID, and we can query Firebase to go and grab it. Make sense? Cool. That's what we're going to do then. So first things first, we want to pass this stuff. So we just get the body back. Okay, we want to pass that. We want to get some JSON data just to get the body. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is come down here and we can say data.json and that is a function. Okay, not sojourn, JSON. Okay, that is a function. And bear with me here. I'm just going to log this to the console as well so you know what I'm going to do. So if we try to log this, then what we are in fact going to get back is this right here. It is a promise. We're not getting that JSON data back to us. So this right here is an asynchronous task, meaning it's going to take some time to complete. Therefore, we cannot just use data.json. We have to wait until that task is done. Then it's going to return us some data. So this right here is returning to us this promise object, right? So that means we can use at some point the dot then when it's completed to fire some kind of function and actually get that data. So check this out. This is what we're going to do. We're going to return this. We're going to return data.json. So what that is going to do in effect is make this whole thing return this. Okay. So therefore, since we're returning this and that is a promise, we get access to that promise interface and we can tack on a dot then method. And inside this method, this is the callback function, which is going to fire when this thing has completed. So when it has completed, it's going to fire this callback function and pass us the actual data that we want, the JSON data. 
So now in this function, we can access that data and I'll show you by logging it to the console. So console.log and the data again. So if we save this and check it out, now if we refresh just to get a clean console, we can see now this JSON data. Awesome. So what is this? This is one object, right? One object. And inside we have all of these four objects. So it's four of our blog posts within one global kind of object. Okay, so what we really want to do now, since we want to add on the ID property right here, yeah, we want to cycle through these objects within this object. And in each case, what we want to do is add on an ID property, which is equal to kind of like this key right here of the object itself. Makes sense. How are we going to do that? Pretty simply again, and we can achieve this in about three or four lines of code. So what we're going to need to do is use a for in loop to cycle through those objects. And I'll explain that in a second. First of all, what I will do is create a variable and this is going to be called blogs array. And this is going to be a temporary array to store the new blogs in with the ID property. So we've got that empty array now. And now what we want to do is cycle through those objects. So I'll say for and then inside let key in data. So what is this going to do? Well, this key thing right here is going to refer to this thing right here. Okay. So this for loop is going to cycle through this object right here, this kind of globe, this parent object, if you like, it's going to cycle through them, right? And for each time it cycles through, it's going to give us access to the key, which is this thing. And I'll log those to the console now. So you can see what they are console.log the key in each cycle through. So if I save that now, check this out, you can see all of these are logged to the console. So they're the keys it gives us access to. So we're grabbing that each time around for each one. And also the data right here is just the overall parent object each time. It's not this object each time. It's this overall object. Okay. So say for instance, I wanted to access the object each time around. Well, what I could do is the data and then in square brackets, the key, this is a bit like array notation, but we're using it in an object this time. So we're saying, okay, well in the global kind of parent object that you're giving us back, then I want you to pass the key in whatever the key is. So it could be this one, this one, this one, this one, and that's going to give me access to the actual object each time around. So if I save this now and view it in a browser, we're going to see those four objects output to the console. Okay, one, two, three, four, and each object now is referring to a blog post. So what we can do now is in each time we cycle through and get this object, add on that ID property. So let us do that. I'm just going to delete this console.log message. And instead, what I'm going to do is say data and then key. So whatever object we are currently on, essentially, and then add on a property called ID. And that is going to equal to the key. Remember this unique kind of string thing, right? So, okay, they're not here, but the, there they are, these unique kind of keys right here. That is going to be the ID, and we're going to attach that to each blog object, right? So we've done that now, and then what we want to do is push this object to this temporary array, this temporary blogs array. So we'll say blogs array, and then dot push, and then we're going to push on the object, so data key, right? Make sense? So now let us log instead the blogs array down here to see what we've got. So let's save that and refresh. In fact, we don't need to refresh. So now we have this array. This is the blogs array that we'll log into the console. And if we open that up, we have these individual objects inside. And now these objects have an ID. Awesome. So now when we're outputting that ID up here, it's going to grab that property and attach it to this URL. So when we go to that URL, we can grab that ID and query the database to get the exact post we want. Okay. So now we have those blogs in this temporary array, but this blogs array right up here is, uh, is still empty, right? And this is the stuff that's being output up here. So we need to populate this now. So all we need to really say is this dot blogs, which is referring to this property right here. Remember, this refers to the instance of this uh, component and then dot blogs is this property right here. So we're going to set that equal to, you've guessed it, this thing right here, blogs array. 
Makes sense? So now we're taking everything we've just kind of created and pushed in here and we're assigning it to this data here. So now when we cycle through them, then we can output that data here. Now, there is going to be just one issue and I'm going to show you that in a minute. If we view this in a browser now, I'm going to refresh and we're probably going to get an error. Yeah, there it is. And if you didn't know what was going on in it, this might kind of stump you for a little while because it's talking about slicing stuff. And remember, we took that slice stuff out and there's no slicing going on here. So what is it? Well, actually, it's this thing right here, this snippet thing, because we're slicing something which doesn't actually exist. We're saying blog.body. Now, in our content, it's actually blog.content. Blog.body was the uh, the property when we used that JSON data, that fake JSON data before, but now it's blog.content instead. So let's just replace this with content. And now this should work. So if we refresh, let's get a clean console. Hopefully, fingers crossed, no errors. Awesome. So let's see, do we get these? Yep, we get each individual now blog post being output there. And if I hover over one of these, I don't know whether you're gonna be able to see this, but in fact, if I inspect the element, then we should see that the link is going to include that unique ID right there. Yeah, that unique ID is in the URL. So when we go now to the single blog component, that is the route parameter we're going to grab to use and query the database to grab that single blog. And we're going to do that now. So then in the single blog component, this is where we're grabbing that route parameter right here. OK, so we're still grabbing it. We don't need to change that. We're grabbing that unique key and we just need to change this URL right here. So remember, this time we're going to Firebase forward slash post.json. So let's grab that from here, like so. And if we add this in here as well, then we're going to the same collection right here. But you see this thing, .json, we don't want that there now. Instead, we want it at the end because we're attaching this ID thing right here. So we'll say plus at the end and then tack on this dot JSON. Now that's fine because we're getting the unique ID. That's one single blog post, right? So same again, return to promise, fire this function, returns the data. Again, what we want to do is pass the body. So we want JSON data. So we're going to say return and it's data dot JSON. That returns a promise, remember? So therefore, let's just get rid of this stuff. We can tack on dot then which finds another callback function. And inside here, we actually get the JSON data. So we'll say data. And inside of this, we can say this.blog, which is this thing right here, this object at the minute, this empty object. And we're going to set that equal to whatever data we get back. OK, so that's just going to be a single blog. That's going to populate this thing right here. Then in the template, we're outputting the blog uh, dot title, the blog dot body, which doesn't exist. Remember, we want blog dot content. So let's save this now and let's just see if it's worked. So if I now refresh and um, this time, I'm going to click on one of my blogs, Hodo, and hopefully it's not worked. Let's just inspect the element and find out why. OK, so the data is not coming through and I think that's because, yep, I've missed off this forward slash right here. So I needed that forward slash because it's posts, then forward slash, then the actual ID. So if I save this dude now, now it should work. If I refresh, now we can see that blog right there. I'm just going to refresh so we get a clean console and uh, yeah, it all works. Let's just go back to the blog and make sure this is all fine now. So my fave cheese, click on that. Whoop, I'm getting my fave cheese and lost in space yet yeah, these are all working so now we're able to output our own data click into that data and view more about it just a couple of things um, I just want to add on a couple more properties out here in the template because remember we have access also to the author and the categories so why not output them I'm gonna say P and I'll say author first of all and that is gonna be the blog dot author so we'll say blog dot author and then underneath that let's output the categories put those in a ul and then inside that an li and remember we need to use a v4 because categories is an array so v hyphen 4 is equal to and it's going to be category in blog dot categories that's the property name and outside here we will just output the category like so so let's save that and check it out in a browser once more. Now we get the author and the categories. And if we go back and check a different one, lost in space, awesome author and categories. 
So there we go, we have made our own simple blog using Vue.js and Firebase. And unfortunately now this is the end of the series. This could have gone on forever, but I thought 44 tutorials is enough for now. In the future, I am gonna be doing Vuex, which is gonna help us with state management and our data, and maybe even build a project from scratch using Vue.js. So I hope this has been of some benefit to you. If you do like these tutorials, please, my friends, don't forget to share them, subscribe, and like the videos. It really helps a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial series.